Welcome to a special bonus episode of Shipwreck Sunday. My name is Eleanor. In today's shorter episode, we will be discussing the shift in the cruise industry away from ocean liners and why the ocean liner is a dying breed. Although we will not be detailing any sinkings today, just a message to our listeners that there may be some mentions of maritime disasters. To start off today's episode, I'll answer the question you might be asking yourself. What is the difference between a cruise ship and an ocean liner? To put it plainly, ocean liners are designed to undertake what is known as a line voyage. Basically, they take you from point A to point B across a large expanse of open ocean. Cruise ships, however, will typically be used primarily for pleasure voyages closer to the coastline and have multiple ports of call. A lot of cruise ships will also return to the original port of departure, for example, a Caribbean cruise embarking and disembarking in Florida. They are also built differently, with ocean liners having a more cutting-edge bow to cut through swells, where cruise ships are wider and rounder and meant to float over large sea waves. Basically, your ocean liner is a big, beautiful greyhound bus of the seas that reliably gets you where you need to go. Whereas your cruise ships are seen like a sports car that you only take out of your garage for the pleasure drives or special occasions. Don't let this fool you, however. Ocean liners can provide the same, if not better, commodities as a cruise ship with just a different crowd. All sorts of demographics, including families with children, older couples, and young couples tend to favor cruise ships, whereas ocean liners are more for your cruise aficionados, ocean liner enthusiasts like myself, or the typical demographic seen on them, older couples that enjoy longer voyages at sea. To me, this is more appealing because the other people on board with you are just as enthusiastic about the vessel as you are instead of only being interested in the destination. The popularity of cruising has decreased dramatically in recent years, especially with the pandemic and multiple disastrous quarantine situations in 2020 where crew and passengers could not go home for months at a time. However, the cruise industry is slowly but surely coming back in popularity as of 2022, experiencing a 96% year-on-year increase in passengers, though this is still over half of the amount of passengers that cruise ships had in 2019. And with cruises being far less popular, that makes the ocean liner in even more danger of going extinct. There's only one ocean liner today that still makes regular transatlantic crossings, and that is Cunard's RMS Queen Mary II. If you would like to experience a transatlantic cruise for yourself, check out Cunard's website. They have a surprisingly large number of crossings with RMS Queen Mary II available. Although other ocean liners, ships built to make these types of crossings, are in existence, many of them are only acting as pleasure cruisers. If you're anything like me, it's heartbreaking to know that ocean liners have declined so heavily in popularity. A lot of this is thanks to the growth of aviation after World War II. It became much more popular to take a 10 or 12 hour flight across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans rather than a week long voyage on an ocean liner. Thus, the cruise industry began to shift more toward pleasure cruising and away from building ocean liners. Airplanes aren't the only thing to blame, however. Advancements in automobile and railway technology also changed the way we travel so drastically that ocean liners began to become obsolete. As the 1950s drew to a close, the sinking of SS Andrea Doria left a sour taste in the public's mouth regarding ocean liners. The beautiful Italian ocean liner sank on a transatlantic crossing after a collision on July 26, 1956, with a loss of 46 lives. She was yet another beautiful liner that found her way to the bottom of the Atlantic, and with Titanic having only sank 44 years earlier and many ships in between, the memories of these disasters were fresh in the public's mind. Shipwrecks and ship sinkings do their own damage to the cruise industry, however it is only a minor reason for ocean liners to decline in popularity. After the 1950s, cruising became more of a luxury than a necessity and warmer, more exotic climates became the most popular destinations opposed to transatlantic and transpacific voyages. Moving forward in history, we see that trend continuing with the founding of Royal Caribbean International in 1968 and Carnival Cruise Line in 1972, with other cruise lines starting around the same time. The goal of these shipping lines was no longer fast, efficient Atlantic and Pacific crossings, but cruising for pleasure and sightseeing. Cruise ships began to get taller, wider, and have more and more amenities aboard for the passengers, almost like floating cities. Gone were the days of merely crossing the Atlantic and 
and enjoying a stroll on the deck or enjoying squash court. In the days of water parks, theaters, and eventually even roller coasters on ships began. Cunard Line, a 200-year-old shipping company known for their beautiful ocean liners, is still in operation and continuing to keep the legacy of ocean liners alive today. Their ocean liners may do primarily pleasure cruising, but the body shape of their ships and the ambiance they provide calls back to a classier, more elegant time in cruising. Amazingly, there are still a few other shipping companies from that time era around, including the Holland America Line that was founded in 1873. Although White Star Line is no longer in existence due to the Cunard-White Star merger in 1934, Cunard Line still continues to guarantee White Star service on all of their ships, honoring the legacy of both historic shipping lines. Despite their loss in popularity, you can still visit two ships from the golden age of ocean liners, with RMS Titanic's tender boat, SS Nomadic, still in existence in Belfast, Ireland for tours, and RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, California as a floating hotel. If you are interested in taking a transatlantic trip, Cunard's RMS Queen Mary 2 is constantly making trips to and from Southampton in New York City. Ocean liners may continue to decline in popularity, but their legacy will never die, and the appreciation of ship enthusiasts everywhere continues to keep them alive. Thank you for tuning in to this bonus episode of Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode, and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a five-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. Come back this Sunday for the story of SS Carl D. Bradley, a Great Lakes cargo freighter that sank in 1958. Don't forget to check out our sister podcast Slasher Saturday and have a great week and we'll see you next time.